Welcome to Pirates of Drenix. Uh, we'll be picking up where we left off last week. So these guys uh, just successful were part of a successful campaign to retake the floating palace um, and the uh, planet Drenax from Lady Hill, who had proclaimed herself emperor. Um, and they discovered that they that luckily for them, uh, because of all of the um, drama that came about with the the coup and uh and having to defend her position she never got around to doing the one key uh kind of required uh act and she didn't kill king oleb so oleb is still in a coma in the in a hospital in the scholar's tower um which isn't really what Oleb wanted. His his last wishes were to just let him die. He didn't want to end up like his son, Prince Herrick, who, if you remember, uh, languished in a, um, a cloning vat for 20 years. Was it 20 years? Maybe 10 years? Anyways, he was in there for a while. And, uh, and he still has aches and pains and walks a little stiff to this day. So... Oleb didn't want that, but here he is, and it's not like he can just go kill him now. So, you know, uh, no, no takesy backsies on that. <clears throat> but uh, these guys, Prince Herrick, ha they have uncovered um, something that Lady Hill had discovered uh, that there was a, a message in the local data net, along with some um, coordinates. In the local data net of uh, number one, where they have a fuel station uh, that they had set up around the gas giant there, and uh, basically Herrick want it, it, it sounds like it is possibly leading to a big score, and Herrick wants them to go get said big score, and uh, so uh, we'll be picking up there. Before we get started, we'd like to thank one of the friends of the Greenwater Guild Hall. None of these are partnerships or sponsorships of any kind. They are just products that we really like. And tonight we'd like to thank Easy Roller Dice. Uh, Easy Roller Dice Company makes, of course, dice and dice-related products for your role-playing role games. They've got, uh, in addition to just your regular dice, I, I love my, my favorite, some of my favorite dice that I own are my translucent dice that I ordered from uh, Easy Roller. Um, they are, they they are some of the best rolling dice I've ever I've ever purchased. Um, but they also make those same types of dice in Sharp Edge, uh, which is really my preference. I really like Sharp Edge dice. Um, so yeah, um, definitely check those out. They've got a new one, the Neapolitan, which is a really nice uh, nice color scheme for Sharp Edge dice. They've got uh, dice bags and they've got dice trays. Their dice trays are really cool. They're like an octagon with a with the uh, dice vault that goes all the way around it. Um, and then they've got uh, towers and all manner of dice related products. Uh, they usually have some kind of sale going on. So if you go and you uh, go to their website, usually it's like a 10% off if you if you sign up and purchase. So definitely go check out Easy Roller Dice Company and uh, pick yourself up some dice. We also have a merch store via Zazzle. Um, if you want to help us out, we have t-shirts and hoodies and buttons and uh, there's a beer stein and a fleece blanket and all manner of nifty things there. And it helps a uh, hundred percent of the proceeds from that store go back into the channel and it helps us cover subscription costs and things of that nature. So if you want to help us pay for our, our roll 20 subscription or, uh, you know, our, the subscription to our mapping software, things of that nature, um, go pick yourself up a t-shirt and a button and we appreciate everything you do. All right. So, where we left off, you guys were, uh, you hit, <laughs> Lady Hill is in the, uh, uh, not necessarily towards the bottom, but she's in, like, the middle section of the gravity dungeons, so her life is rather unpleasant right now. And, uh, like I said, Oleb is in a coma, and the message that you uncovered, you found it on Lady Hill's portable computer in her royal quarters. Uh, the message read, urgent, urgent, urgent. Local slime bag contact has info. Get the info, but be nice. Don't call him a slime bag. Act on the info. Do not offend the slime bag. Info, info is about a big score. I want that score. Set up an ambush. Steal their keys. Whatever. I want their cargo. Urgent. And the 
the, I mean, it, this sounds like it came from King Oleb. I mean, that's how he usually talks. Even Prince Herrick, upon seeing this, um, said that that sounds like his father. And the the coordinates on it are uh, to a, um, it is to a small shop on number one's, uh, in number one's starport. Uh, they only have the uh, downport. And uh, it is to a uh, business that sells, um, uh, it's a Starship Chandler business. Uh, they, they sell s uh, support spares, life support spares, uh, prepackaged meals, that sort of thing that you would uh, stock up on at the Starport. Now, the, the biggest key to this is, like I said, number one doesn't have, an, uh, have a high port. They only have the down port. Um, two things. So the first, of course, is that number one is a toxic hellhole, and uh, their starport is on this really high mountaintop that is mostly above the worst of the atmosphere. And so, uh, for the most part, you can wander around the starport if you're wearing a respirator. The and they have trams that go down. And so, number one was was originally not really a colony. It was a Sindalian prison planet, and the prison, uh, their their penal colonies were un, were beneath the the ocean, and so from the starport there is a tram system. This tram goes down a, a monorail type tram goes down the rails, plunges into the ocean, goes underwater, and then docks at the colony at the base. Now, you know the warden of uh, number one. What was her name? She is a lovely little bitch. <laughs> Aren't we kind of trying to go the other way, though? I mean, I, I thought when we were going to reestablish this new kingdom and all that shit that we were going to stop pirating and start removing pirates from the Dust Belt. Well, I mean, that was, that was what he envisioned. This isn't uh, necessarily pirating. Uh, this is just that there is a big score. <laughs> so, I mean, what that particularly means, you don't know. Uh, but Herrick, uh, I mean, you know, you can, <clears throat> yes, not necessarily stop pirating. He still wants you to pirate because you're technically not pirating. You are being privateers. And, and, uh, you know, we don't have another income source. I think well, see, well, and that's the problem that Herrick has is that she spent all the money in the coffers. Well, I mean, if you want to make money, I mean, wouldn't it wouldn't it be the most profitable and and push our reputation if we went and took over pirate ships and sold them on the black market for millions of credits? <laughs> I mean, probably. Just, I don't know how that would impact our relations with Steve, though. I feel like right. that would get us kicked out. Of as long as we don't cross a pirate, right? Board. And like I said, you're not. You're technically okay. speaking, you're not pirates. You're privateers. The difference being is that you have a a writ of mark, meaning that you have legitimate rights to attack ships that are traveling through what is considered yeah. Rinex space. Dro those ships that are traveling through that space aren't paying taxes or tariffs to Drinex. So they should technically be fair game anyways. Now, until mm -hmm. Drinex is seen as a legitimate power, nobody else is going to see it that way. The Imperium's not going to see it that way. They're going to see you as pirates. But once Drinex is legitimate, then you can produce that writ of mark, and they're like, oh, okay, well, we can't really... We can't arrest you for pri for piracy because you were acting as agents of your government. Yeah. So, I mean, so I'm cool yeah. to go get the the thing or whatever, but I I mean I would just think if we went to like Tier or something like that and started hitting those Augment Raiders and 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 feeding off their <laughs> ship supply, uh. People you know, would like us more if we got rid of Augment Raiders, like, anyway. Just, I mean, yeah. They and, don't and, like the cannibalism. I mean, I just dropped a million dollars for the fucking, uh, I mean, a million credits for the people of the palace to eat. So, I mean, God, we sure. Have that's a parade. Well, tier, 
Tier generally isn't where the Ogman Raiders are. The the two biggest worlds that have problems with Ogman Raiders are down here. Uh, Marduk and Borite have huge problems with Ogman Raiders. There are a couple of Raider clans that do have have Jump 2 capability that can make it into the rest of the Dust Belt or down here to Torpal, Clark, and Blue. But for the most part, most of those ships are Jump 1. So it's they don't have a lot of Jump 2 ships. Uh, right. But Marduk has pretty bad problems with Ogma. But, we'll, yeah, we'll get to Ogma. Tier's a whole other thing. So uh, Tier... Tyr isn't the Augment Raiders. They don't have problems with the Augment Raiders so much that Tyr is Raiders of them own, of their own. They are, they are imperialistic, and they have attempted to basically take over worlds all the way uh, to Dostoevsky. Um, uh, Urkarta has a problem. Asus has probably the biggest problem with them, um, to the point that Asus hired uh, Aslan mercenaries. <laughs> in order to stop tier and they were successful the agreement with the mercenaries was that they would allow them to settle on aces or yeah and uh yeah. so yeah, well, that, that's the, yeah i just remembered that we got the the thing about tier pirates and and yeah tier, I mean, tier is their own their whole they they are their whole own problem um and potentially the problem of, of everybody else surrounding them because they like i said they're very imperialistic but asus when they hired those aslan mercenaries the aslan really put the hurt on them and put a stop to that shit like right now and so tear has kind of been uh quiet for several decades uh licking their wounds but we like should... oh sorry go no go ahead um, I think we should see exactly what state um, King Olev is in, check on him, and then I think we should also have a parade with all the sweet food that King... Yeah. I, well, I not all rather, of it, but a bunch. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I would much rather stay here until we know Lady Hill is actually dead. I, I, I mean, you know, yeah. I, would, I would like to actually see the body, you know? <laughs> Yeah, she she was kind of a huge pain, very manipulative. So that's yeah. outside of reason. Yeah. Plus, it's fucking tiring. That was a really, um, really crazy mission. So yeah. back to what I was saying about number one, though. I mean, you, you so the the basics of this is that you will have to dock at the starport. Uh, the down port on number one in order to make contact with whoever this person is to get the information. The, Num number one is on the way to tier, by the way. That number one is where you have your 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 fuel station. Oh, I mean, I'm just saying it's on the way to tier and all that other shit. I mean, we can do them both is, is kind of what I'm saying. We can go chase the, the clues on number one. And then if it takes us up to Salee for Homestead or something, that's cool. That's fun territory, too. But if it doesn't, I mean, Tyr and all that shit is just kind of right up the Dust Belt main there. Right. So, I mean, it's it's all the same direction. Right. That, that's a win-win. So, the, 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 the second problem with number one is that uh, Warden Renib, who – how old is she? She's – Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was assuming she was old than that. She, when you first met her, she was eight years old. She's probably now about nine. And uh, she uh, just is in love with the idea of killing pirates. And she already doesn't like you guys because uh, one of the one of uh, Peter Velas's his his right hand man, who was an old salty pirate himself. Um, kind of somehow enamored her, and uh, she, you, you guys, kind of ended him, and uh, so she, she of course has. We didn't kind of into him. We yeah, did in him. <laughs> right, yeah. So she, she of course has, um, you know, she's butt hurt about it. And it should um, be interesting in housing the tier people that we capture as we go pirating the pirate raiders of tier. You know, that way she could like get her little ego stroked because we'll drop off 
people with a small nominal fee, of course. Uh, <laughs> care. And and uh and and she benefits by knowing that she can house and punish the traitors by her whatever fucking whim she has. And we get to go fuck off some pirates. Well you you might be underestimating uh how pissed off a nine year old who has uh total authority of an entire planet and uh uh nobody to ground her might be. See, what I was thinking was maybe this would be our chance to use our disguise nets and stuff and just pretend to be somebody else. Yeah. That's not a terrible idea, yeah. Yeah, we can do that. She's psychotic, I do remember that. She's like very scary. Yeah, yeah she she is a little uh, unhinged. We may or may not even have to actually dock with the fucking planet. We gotta, I mean, I mean, really go too deep. We're just supposed to go holler at one motherfucker. Yeah, I mean, course, like I said, the starport is at the top of the highest mountain, and it is only a Class C port. So, how do we identify the scummy person? Though? Well, they literally have scum on them. Well, they they're uh, they're at they're a running the gas stop. station. Oh, no, okay. no, they're not All running right. the gas station. They are down on the planet. And you are given coordinates to their uh, okay. And you need a new motherfucker to work in the gas station. I yeah, do. I probably... need a new gas station. Attendant. Yeah, because the old one uh, uh, had a tragic accident. We should bring one with us. We probably While we're here. Should. Yeah. Should we get yeah. one of the slaves and make them work there? No, that's not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> They'll do a really well, good know, job, but I don't yeah. know if they're That's right. You, did, you liberated. You funny. you did liberate uh, a bunch of human slaves that were they were dog soldiers for the glorious empire uh, for the they mercenaries. To, yeah, they need to be re-educated. In, in well, I mean, in if he's gonna if, if you take two or three of them and put them on the fuel station, they'll have a lot of time to read. True. Yeah. yeah. And All right. Let's yeah. throw it out to them if they're interested. They can come along. Yeah. How do you I'm feel about that. pumping gas? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, don't like, I don't like pumping gas. <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, you can read, you know, and look around. Well, I mean, look the, around. The, the fuel station at number stuff. one isn't a terrible posting because I mean, this is right on the dust belt. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of ships that are going to be coming through. You know, potentially, you know, looking for to refuel. So, you know, that, that's not an awful place to be. They're like very loyal too. It's just cool. I don't know if they'll be loyal to us, but I'm betting they would be. They'd be loyal to Ting. Yeah, true. After, after he liberated them. them. Yeah, and gave them the big speech. Right. Yeah. They're they're going to name their kids variations of my name. <laughs> we can we can breed them and see how that works out. Yeah. That'll happen on its own. It's okay. We don't have to do yeah. anything. <laughs> we don't have to make a breed. Just you know, due to the plutonium in their explosive colors, they're all sterile. Oh, no. <laughs> womp, womp. I don't know. Um, so yeah, I mean, how how do you guys want? I mean, like you said, the disguise net uh, probably isn't a terrible idea. Yeah, and we'll just say we if they give us the shit, we'll just say we were contracted to drop off the worker or something. Yeah, so we'll use our uh alias our fucking yeah. imperial citizen fucking aliases. Yeah, yeah and, and, and just and couple that with the disguise net. So the disguise net uh, Nancy just, somewhere. It projects the holographic image of whatever the fuck we want. Yeah. Right, but that's not what I'm looking for. We got full bodies. And then we got hoods. For so yeah. the disguise net will allow you to maintain the disguise for a full day. Yeah. Yeah. So the that's batteries just why will we're last you for for essentially 24 hours. I'm a standard 24 hours. Okay. All you gotta do is charge them, right? Right. Right. So, but I mean, I mean, you're you're probably not gonna be able you're not gonna be able to charge them while you're using it down on the on the planet. You, so you right. got whatever business you're going to conduct on the planet, you got 24 hours with the disguise net that you can look yeah. like however you want to look. 
but I mean, we can we can turn it off and select things. I mean, really, for the most part, we have to worry about that at, at the security checkpoint, and then when we have talking, if 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 we just kind of get in, get our business, and get out. Uh, uh, 24 hours should be plenty of time. Perhaps we could uh, bring spare batteries. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I don't have like this guy's net. I bought, I bought one for everybody. I yeah, 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 every, yeah, everybody should. I yeah. think everybody has a disguise now. We are. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it, is, it is on page eight. By the way, I'm only, I'm only social twelve and not thirteen. All right. All right. So it is on page 82 of the Central Supply Catalog Update 2023, and it is the whole body version. So, yeah, hood and the whole body. We, we bought both of them separately. Yeah, they could do your face. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Got head and whole body. Yeah. I'll just walk so, in as yeah. King, I'll walk in as King Olaf. Yeah. So that, that's, <laughs> yeah. that, 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 King Olaf is concerned. I mean, we should, I think we should check on him and, and see what happens if, it, I mean, if he's unplugged. Would would that kill him? And if so, we have a video of say him saying, "Let me die," and and I mean, you know, of course, it'd be the prince's fucking ultimate decision. Yeah, but, I mean, the prince is aware. Prince Eric is aware of uh, of the video. He's seen it. You, I mean, you already showed that to him. Yeah. Um, but he's like, stop emailing this to me. <laughs> <laughs> Stop posting uh, that to Facebook. You know, I, uh, Ting spams you with all kinds of videos and shit all the time. So, like I said, he's, he has seen the video, and he... It irritates him, because um, he's partially irritated at you guys, uh, because... Olib had said he wanted to die. You get, you did a little bit of first aid on him, enough to get him to uh, back to the palace. And, of course, you didn't plan on... You just wanted to do the first aid on him because you needed a little bit of information from him, uh, which you were able to get. Um, and then he was put onto life support machines, and he's now in a coma. And so it irritates... Eric a little bit that you didn't follow his wishes at the same time um, he of course doesn't necessarily he doesn't really want his father to die um, and, and certainly not the way that he would have died uh, I mean in, in a perfect world in, in Prince Eric's mind Oleb would have died of old age probably from cirrhosis of the liver but um, <laughs> But true, or, or or a really bad STD, knowing uh, Olaf. But um, you know, of course, there were these assassins that went after him, and this whole coup attempt happened, and and so he he doesn't he's not Herrick's, of course, not willing to pull the plug yet, and uh, you know he he's going to he's not going to do anything like cybernetically, you know keep him alive forever like was done to him but at the same time uh he's not really going to he's not ready to pull the plug either so it's just kind of a wait and see maybe this will be a situation that either that will resolve itself one way or the other mm -hmm. uh, it's well, his dad fair enough yeah that's cool i mean i'd like to go look at this big score and and, and move on past this false hope mission that we've getting sent on okay yeah I, i'm just yeah king olive has never been a, a score real score guy it's just he, he follows up on rumors. so and and a, most of olive's contacts will now be uh going through herrick of course herrick has uh essentially olive's little black book of of um nefarious contacts throughout the Trojan Reach, and a lot of these are uh, ways to fence, um, essentially fence stolen property. So anything that is, that is, of course, 
uh, pirated, uh, he can move through either fence or he can move through money launderers. Of course, money laundering is going to be a, a better route. He'll get, you know, at least 20% back on a money laundering operation. If he's fencing it, he'll probably only get about 5%, but it really depends on what it is. And, of course, there's always Rashondo as well. <clears throat> so, you know, he, he has access to that. And one thing that should be noted is that because you're being sent specifically for this score, this isn't like you're pirating a ship where you would cut 10% off the top and give it to Herrick. This is, they, he, will, he wants the whole score, and really they need the whole score. But he's, of course, Prince Herrick is likely to be very generous to you guys if you succeed. We'd like, if it's all possible, to, you know, we've got a lot of uh, overhead. And, and so, I mean, if, if it's, I, I just like to be able to take into account and say it really nice and polite and stuff that, you know, if, if there's, if there's any way able that, you know, you could make sure that all our guys get cut in, even if they're not going to actively go in there, because we're responsible for their pay. And, oh yeah. Uh, that, undoubtedly. I mean, your your pirate ban um, has been um, has grown, of course, uh -huh. and so he will take that into account in any reward that he gives you. But um, you know, before he can say any say absolutely yes one way or the other, we have to see what the score possibly is. Um, and and he is in full agreement with you that the reality is that let's be honest, not all of his well, almost none of his that. father's. Uh, "Quote unquote scores have been have been scores have been, they've been right. You know, and, dogs yeah. chasing their tail. And so I'd so like I'd to like kind to of kind amend of things. Answer. I'd like to amend things to where uh, because we got all this overhead, could we uh, could we take their expenses off top before we pay our tithing after this mission? Hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah." You can renegotiate. Yeah, you can take their. You you can take your crew's expenses off, but not. You can take their expenses off, but not their shares. Yeah, fair enough. But so yeah, their, so when their normal wages and whatnot and fuel costs. Yes, you can take that off the top and then take your. And that includes your, your, uh, <clears throat> your expenses as well. You can cut expenses off the top, and then you can take the tithe. And then whatever that, that, you do with the rest yeah. as far as shares, that's up to you. Yeah, that that's a big nut off our back. So I'm, I'm all cool with that. Thanks, team. Yeah. <laughs> so then Always the, trying to get an angle. <laughs> yeah, that's <for him. laughs> yeah. So are you taking the Osiris? Are you taking the Anubis? Are you taking... Shenanigans, what ship do you want to take on this little junket? If we're preparing to go fuck off tier and shit or the possibility of that, moving the whole, the whole, you know, our whole, not maybe not shenanigans, but our whole little fleet taking it there, you know, maybe we could leave or we could leave some for this defense of the Drenix thing. I mean, they need that too. Yeah, they're, yeah. Because, I they mean, of course, uh, so Grihai's uh, mercenary cruisers aren't going to stick around. Um, uh, so that will leave, and of course, the mercenaries that were hired, they've done their job. So there are only going to be a couple of free traders uh, left hanging around uh, for defense. And I would say, you know... Um, there are like Drinex does have uh, one system defense boat, uh, but aside from that, they don't have a whole lot of defenses. So I don't know. Maybe you want to leave a couple or, or one Harrier or. I think at least the one Harrier, you know. Yeah. Or I a just, Scout's Honor. Yeah, I believe a Scout's Honor. Um. We just haven't gone anywhere with shenanigans in a long time. And we can take shenanigans. Yeah, I'm totally I think it'd be cool fun. shenanigans. I'm, yeah, I'm fine with that. If we're going to be disguised, maybe it would be good to go with shenanigans anyway. Yeah. Yep. So, All right. Uh, and, and so, therefore, it'll be Anubis, uh, Mars, 
Osiris and the scouts on her. I mean, we've they're already fully staffed, correct? Correct. All right. And on shenanigans now, I'd like to go ahead and, and say that I'm bringing my robot brigade. Okay. You can do that. So this is these stats for shenanigans. She's jumped two, thrust four. Um, she, you know, basically has been upgraded interior-wise, uh, mostly like a almost like a yacht. Uh, because remember, she did belong to Coraline Petrovsky for a while. And there have been some additional upgrades that were made to shenanigan shenanigans even before uh, Coraline got her hands on her. Um, so, for instance, the bridge has been upgraded to have holographic controls. Um, the computer system has been upgraded. The computer core has been upgraded. Um, sensors have so been... These... I'm sorry. So the sensors. The, yeah, the sensors have been upgraded to military grade. It has uh, uh, two, double, uh, uh, two double turrets with beam lasers, and, or a double turret with two beam lasers and a double turret with a missile rack and a sandcaster. Um, you know, not... Uh -huh. Not excessively armed, but uh, good for a uh, far trader. Um, it does have a air raft, uh, in it, and it has an air raft dock. So the air raft can actually be launched. If you're in Atmo, uh, that air raft can be launched. You don't have to be grounded. Um, got a fuel processor for 40 tons a day. Loading belt. I mean, it, it looks... For all intents and pur purposes, from the outside, it looks like a jump to far trader. Would that, would that air raft dock or whatever? Could we, uh, could we switch that out with the dragonfly? No. Oh darn! Well, you know me, I try. <laughs> <laughs> I try. All right. Well, cool. Yeah, no. The the reason is that uh, if and if I remember, hold on, and I will, before I say absolutely no, I will double check that. But I'm pretty sure the answer is no. Uh, I was just thinking that'd be really cool to fly around and shoot shit in an armored helicopter better than an air raft. Let's see here. That's how you shoot the shit, you know. This leaves Drenix in a lot more protected fucking state, I guess, you know? Yes, definitely. Yeah. So, docking space, uh, internal bay in which a small auxiliary ship or vehicle can dock when sealed. The docking space completely covers the auxiliary ship. Uh, docking space consumes an amount of tonnage equal to that of the largest ship to be docked, plus 10%. So, this docking space... Let me look at the air raft. So shipping weight for the air raft is four tons. And Dragonfly Jarra Gravcopter is on page 102. Yeah, its shipping weight is 10 tons, so no, it, it won't even fit in there. Yeah, damn it. Sorry. Well, that was a shot. Yeah. But yeah, at, least, yeah, it's at, least you, at least you, I mean, the, the nice thing about it is that you don't have to land, unpack, you know, unhook it from all the, the cargo net cables yeah. and whatnot. This is a dedicated docking space you can just pile in and take off. Yeah, cool. Let's go. Yeah, okay. we will go with shenanigans. Yeah, the the idea of shenanigans uh, is that it is your ace up your sleeve that you can uh, basically take off 
whenever need be. And so, uh, so here is your your deck plan for shenanigans. Who wants to make the? Well, I guess we don't need the deck plan. For shenanigans. What we need is. I've never been on shenanigans before. Yeah. So the other thing. <laughs> The other thing is that Shenanigans has, a, and one of the reasons, I mean, the obvious reason for the increased computer core is that Shenanigans has a conscious intelligence that initially when they first uh, were aboard Shenanigans, um, it was hidden. And it was, it's a very, it was very shy, but it has since uh, over time, it learned to more or less trust these guys. And so there is, it's not an artificial intelligence. This is a conscious intelligence. So it is, for all intents and purposes, a person that is living inside the computer. And it can fly the ship. It has piloting and, and the whole bet. So um, who wants to make the astrogation check? Um, yeah, I guess I'll do astrogation. Or torpor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Hold on just a second here. Port etiquette. And who wants to make uh so uh Captain Beth, you can make a piloting plus dex check. Seven. Okay. <laughs> All right. Take off there. It's okay. It's uh, it, it's a routine check, so only, okay. only need six. Where is my? There we go. So at thrust four, you're probably looking at. About 34 hours uh, to get to jump limit, and uh, so 34 hours goes by. Uh, the the pretty much the system, the Drenax system uh, is pretty calm right now because you have. I mean, calm. Uh, there are, is a lot of traffic in the system because you've got two mercenary cruisers with their pinnaces. You've got uh, a number of the smaller. Uh, craft and then of course you have um the two um the two merc ships that were hired um gunboats and so there's a lot of ships in system but aside from that you don't have a bunch of ships coming and going uh they're they're just there they're right now they are in a holding pattern waiting for their jobs to finish up before they jump out of system as well and they're kind of uh, sitting, you know, um, in between. I'm bleeding. I'm bleeding. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she I got, got me. me. Yeah. Oh my! Yeah. So, so the uh, they're kind of sitting in between uh, Drenax and that hundred hundred diameter jump limit, um, and so you thirty four hours. You you it, it is a pretty calm ride, um, and. Uh, Shenanigans is, of course, uh, the conscious intelligence is running um, a number of, of programs to basically monitor comms traffic, um, which you have had her doing on Drenax all this time. And uh, so uh, who wants to make the engineering power plus intellect or education check? I think that's Gregor. That's what I'm thinking too, but that's not possible. What? Two D plus two can't get to fifteen. <laughs> yeah. What is wrong with this thing? That's a little weird. 
Eight. Okay. And that's the first one that makes sense. And then, uh, yeah, that's a little, that's a little bizarre. And then, and then uh, you know, they changed the change the dice roller, and it's yeah, really complicated. You, you can click the thing that says advanced roller, and it'll mm -hmm. switch to the simple roller, and you're good to go. Yeah, the, I like I like the uh, the simple roller where you could just click how many dice you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so uh, Keith, you can make a um, J drive plus intellect or education check, and you get a plus one to that roll. Nice. That is uh, 12. Nice. Okay. Are you doing anything in jump? I, I would like to analyze the comm traffic data that Shenanigans has collected uh, and maybe even ask her opinion on, on things while we're in jump, you know? Right. Okay. Um, and so my question is, where are you jumping to? I mean, the obvious uh, uh, Torpol, yeah, right? Yeah, the obvious choice would be Torpol. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, we've got to get to number one. I'd avoid the Augman Raiders in this ship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we should go to Borain. Yeah. So coming out of jump, you there are at Torpol there are no ships in system, uh, which mm -hmm. isn't really that unusual. Um, they are um, Torpol is this this little trio of planets here is <laughs> pretty much uh, pretty desolate. I mean, you've got some that'll jump over from uh, Aranasir and use this to hop uh, to Marduk and then onto the main, but uh, this route isn't uh, isn't populated very often. Uh, make another astrogation check. Astrogation plus intellect or education. Okay. Uh, and we're going to Borite even if our fucking space station is destroyed. Okay. I thought we go to Marduk because isn't that a haven for us? Yeah, you do have a haven on Marduk. Oh, oh that's right. I forgot about yeah. it. I mean, it's, that it's the, I mean, if you want, it, 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 that's assuming you want to land. But um, I mean, the high port's not. The, well, the high port and the down port aren't particularly fond of you, but you have a hidden enclave of natives that you discovered on Marduk that would allow you to land if you needed to oh, kind of right. hide out. Yeah. Uh, so I got nine. Well, okay. even, even since you're asking me, you can decide if we're going to more dark or boring. I don't really. Either one seems okay since yes. we're not like playing out. Okay, let's go to Marduk. Okay, yeah, I mean it, it's shorter. Um, and then uh, make another power plus uh, intellect or education. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, then, last but not least, so are you rolling two D six? Oh yeah, you are. Okay, that's it's weird how it's putting this up. Anyways, yeah, I'm trying to do two D plus two, and it's I'm not sure what it's doing. Oh, switch to the simple roller. Wait, it's it's saying three plus one plus two. It's saying two D. 2d6 plus and like two exclamation points plus two equals three minus one plus two. But that still isn't six. Three plus one. Or three plus one. Okay. So no, it, it rolled correctly. Okay. Yeah, it's just, I, I don't like the way it's coming Weird up now. Text the way it, yeah, it's, it used to come up in the parentheses and tell you what you rolled automatically without having to mouse over it. That's. I hate this. I mean, they made a change for no reason whatsoever to make it worse. 
Right. Do you, do you see the words that say advanced roller? I turned it off and I turned it on and it didn't make any difference. Yeah. No, you just click. You just, there's the word. It's in a different color. It says like simple roller or advanced roller. It's at the very bottom of the roller in the left hand corner. If you just hover over that and click that button, it switches to the to the simple roller. I don't have that. It doesn't show up. Uh oh. I don't know. Right, my power just flickered again. Are you guys still there? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so if I disappear, um, you know, you know what happened. Uh, then there's no rules anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then, yeah then, then the world disappears. So, anyways, um, I'm gonna check this. Can finally go. Seems like window that, window. that thing doesn't appear on my dice option. Where it Some says reason. it says simple roller. No, I don't have a simple roller option. Yeah, it's not on the dice icon. No. On the actual dice roller box. Yeah, in the lower left hand corner of the dice roller box, it'll say simple roller or advanced roller. Nope. Mine just says advanced roller. Yeah, if, yeah. You, yeah, if you oh, click that, oh, it'll. There it is. It's underneath the... <laughs> It's underneath everything. Well, I do know. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I do know that it has been acting weird because, like, I was using it earlier and. When I would click, when I would switch over to the simple roller, and I would click on like I want to roll d sixes, I would click that, and it would bring the the pop up underneath the dice window. So I had to move yeah. the dice roller window in order. It, they seem to have fixed that uh, since earlier today. So I don't know. But I can't add anything to it. Why can't you? It won't let me. <laughs> Well, you should have a box to the right of the dice that, that f there's plus and then there's a zero and you can raise or lower it. Nope. Maybe if I make this thing bigger. Nope. Oh, crap. Sorry, I'm just rolling stuff to see what happens. Oh, it's all right. I'm doing the 3D dice. I don't know if that makes it work. That's what I do. Too. That's what I do too. I found that the dice roll better if you use the three D dice. I like to watch the graphic. If it is, it's just straight up showing it when I do it. That yeah, way. yours is showing correctly. Uh, but I don't know. Weird. Anyway, so. Uh, yeah. yeah. Nice. Cool. So uh, you've got you got your power, uh, and Keith, you can make another. Uh, J drive plus intellect or education, you get another plus one. Another 12. All right. Uh, and so, Ting, make a. Uh, you're, you're going through the comms uh, that, uh, that Shenanigans has been monitoring, correct? So are yes. you just going through the, the comms that she was monitoring from the mercenary ships uh, or from the fleet, or are you going back all the time that she's been on, you know, housed on Drenax? The whole time. I'm trying to find juicy uh, information, tidbits. Uh, you know, I'm even asking shenanigans to help me uh, out of this because, uh, you know, she's been Yes. Doing all the work, you know, and it'll be like, you know, hey man, you know, have you heard anything? Uh what's the news? Could I could I at least get the cliff notes on on what you've observed? Yes. Yeah, so <clears throat> go ahead and make a electronics comms plus uh intellectual education check. And she is huh. going to give you right. a plus two uh eleven. So in the two weeks, um you uh you pick up a number of transmissions. One of the transmissions that you pick up, uh, I will tell you what that is here in just a moment. But it is, you, it, 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 when you find this, uh, it does make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. Uh, uh, hold on just a moment. Do you know uh, how we know that the toothbrush was invented on Ace? 
Because if wow. it was invented anywhere else, it would be a teeth brush. <laughs> right. Yeah, because you're not brushing just one tooth. Right. <laughs> Okay. My, my son's getting married in Montana, and I googled Montana jokes, and that was one of them. How do you know that the toothbrush was invented in Montana? <laughs> because if it was anywhere else, it would be teeth joke. But you know, I don't want to dog on a state on the internet or nothing. You know, I mean, why not? That's fine. That's what it's for. Right. Oh, I hear you. <laughs> uh, so in this in Marduk uh, in Marduk system, I did my table of contents? There it is. That's not at all what I wanted. Here we go. That's what I want. You, there is another ship in system. All right. Oh, I dumb. I'm stupid. There it is. You are pinging a local craft. Um, it is a shuttle. It is pinging as the Emma. Oh. Well, then, you know, we should ha say hi, right? You know, hello, is Emma. That, is yeah. that politeness and space? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, if it's a local craft, you check in on your way in so they don't think we're pirates or anything. Yeah, God forbid you wouldn't want one of them to think that. Right. So, you know, it'd be like, you know, hello, Emma, this is the shenanigans. How are you this fine point in your day? You're running sensors and comms. Go for it. Yeah, I might as well do the fucking yeah, uh, sensors, too. You want to do sensors? You don't yeah, need to make I'm a comms check. All right, I'm going to do, I'm going to add two because we've got the military sensors. Okay. Yeah. Which, yeah, that's wonderful. 12. Okay. So, yeah, active a, wide open sensors looking at everything. Okay. So, on a 12, uh, so you, uh, you've you gone active sensors. And, uh, yeah. you know, Emma comes back as a uh, 95 ton local shuttle. <clears throat> uh, she is. Uh, but she's, you know that, so the Marduk High Port does send shuttle, there is, I wouldn't necessarily say regular shuttle traffic, but most of their traffic is, uh, any freighters and whatnot will dock at the High Port, unload their cargo, and then any cargo that is to be gone, that, to be taken planet side or people, they, they shuttle down. But Emma's not doing that. Emma is coming from the uh, outer belts. And your your uh, sensors are registering her as a 95 ton. She is 95 tonner. She's uh, pretty much standard. She does have uh, she is armed. She has a fixed mount pulse laser. Um, and uh, on comms, uh, she comes back. It's, it's cool being civilians because we can talk to people and, and we don't have to sneak. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Uh, it comes back affirmative uh, greetings, uh, shenanigans. Uh, the, the, this is uh, Captain Nils Al uh, Alfney. Uh, just uh, 
transporting cargo, uh, some some ore. Ah, oh, yeah. We are sightseeing and scouting uh, along, just l seeing the sights of the magnificent Dust Belt. And uh, was just wanted to check in, you know, make sure that there's no rumors of pirates or or STDs in the port, whatever might be going <laughs> on, you know. I'd like to just reach out. Uh, so, uh, Nils Alfney, uh, the captain of Emma, comes back uh, kind of laughing and says, uh, he says, um, it's Marduk, there's always pirates. I mean, we were hit by Augman Raiders uh, three weeks ago, so yeah, you know, it's pretty regular. Mm -hmm. He said, I, I, I heard that there might be a naval convoy coming through, though, so hoping that they'll kind of knock everything out on, on their way through. You're damn right. It's it's cool to be able to say that we come through these areas and all that, but it's really only cool if we do not get in any kind of confrontations. Is you know that really ruins the vibe of the cruise, you know? Oh, affirmative, affirmative. Um, what did you get on your sensors check? Twelve. So on your sensors check, uh, you're not picking up. Um, so, I mean, you don't have. You've only got military grade sensors, uh, but part of a military grade sensor package is, of course, a densitometer. Um, you're not picking up. Uh, so Emma, Captain Nils Alfney said that Emma was uh, transferring ore from the uh, from the belt. But that's not what you're picking up. You're not picking up the telltale signatures that that or would would read out. This is a motherfucking slaver. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, hmm. I, I, I'll I'll ask the captain. Be like, man, they're lying their ass off. Uh, you know. Uh, the other well, thing you know is that there's not a whole lot of mining activity that goes on yeah. in Marduk. Yeah, that's true. Um, what does go on in Marduk? Not they much. Might not much. To, so Marduk For used Marduk. to be a major port, but th those days are long gone. Uh, they well, uh, slaves or drugs or yeah. guns. Or, I mean, like, yeah. man, you know, if you're if you're shipping drugs or something, you know, you don't really have to lie to me. I, I'm not the police. But but lying to um, me is rather okay. offensive. Make another uh, sensors plus intellect or education check. Sure will. Oh, yeah, no, man, I got an eight. So you are picking up radioactives from the cargo hold. Oh, you've got radioactives. Are your pants on fire, Captain? <laughs> um... So on your second check, you are picking up uh, what could be ore. Um, your densitometer is reading that it could be uh, high-value metal and radioactives. Man, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, so what? And you're, yeah. right. and you're detecting uh, radioactive leakage in the cargo hold. Oh, we should tell him. That's not Yeah, him. you know, I am picking up some radioactive <laughs> leakage in your cargo hold. He says, uh, got yeah, me. affirmative, affirmative. Uh, uh, we, we've got some uh, less than, less than, uh, um, less than valuable crates that we've stored the ore in. Uh, but y you have to make do with what you've got. Are you in need of assistance? Uh, negative, negative. Uh, no, we're we're okay. And, uh, and then you hear uh, you over the comms. You can hear from uh, somebody in like it sounds like they're in behind him. Say, why are you turning down assistance? I mean, I mean, holy shit, we're all gonna grow a second head. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I will, I will a third arm. Yeah, I will. I will point them out to the captain. You're like, man, they got radioactive stuff. So. It's we, leaking. But we have, some, we have radiation drugs if they want. Yeah. Trade for any, that's fine with me. If they don't, then 
That's their problem, I guess. I mean, if we if we jack them for their fucking radioactive fucking thing, those things are a million credits fucking ton on the base prize. Uh, I'm I just saying. Crazy, so. I, we're busy too. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're too busy to pirate the Emma. <laughs> yeah. I, piracy may be a bad idea in this family. Yeah, and we're going to the planet and pretending not to be pirates, and they're going to be like, oh, cool, where'd you get all this radioactive ore from? And we'll that, like, yeah, yeah, that could be hard yeah. to fence. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm up to the challenge if you are. <laughs> but uh, uh, but yeah, I'll I'll uh, I'll be like, yeah, man, yeah, that's that's really we great. Could trade stuff. for medical assistance. That's what I was yeah. thinking. Because they're in need of them. medical assistance. You know, it is our this is our duty as as good spacefaring folk to offer assistance if need. If not, well, we wish you well. You know, may may your 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 days be bright and shiny and your nuts not glow. <laughs> yeah. But I will suggest that we give that thing a fucking wide berth. Yeah, true. Yeah. There's something going on. Yeah, but that's not our business, really. But, I mean, we can make anything we want our business. We we have that effect on people. We are the protagonist. Yeah. There we go. That's better. Oh, would you rearrange the the sheet? Yeah, I I added uh, shenanigans stats to this page. Oh, cool. So know what's there? And so, uh, so yeah, uh, so the so Captain Alfney kind of you know, like over his shoulder. Pipe down, Johnson, and and says, uh, you know, safe travels. And he continue the the Emma continues on her route to the high port. So my question to you is, uh, you're you're letting her go. Um, are you going to? Uh, are you going? Well, hold on. I guess I need I need this map. So Marduk does have gas giants. Are you going to fuel at the high port, or are you going to fuel uh, at the? Uh, or are you going to do wilderness refueling? Um, I don't think we should go for wilderness. Yeah. Do my best. Okay. Go ahead. And make a uh, piloting plus dex check. <laughs> Oh, okay. oh, okay. I'm gonna, the whole time we're doing this shit because I know we have a transponder on and we're sticking out like fucking sore thumb anyway. I'm gonna constantly be on the sensors, so whenever that would constitute a check. Yeah, I mean you're you are transmitting your transponder is transmitting as shenanigans, uh, a a uh, far trader. Uh, your home port is listed as Drinax. I got um eight. We can go to Thebes from here, can't we? I don't even remember what's there. I got all my credits and stuff from here. You guys hear Chris? I cannot hear Chris. I'll refresh. Hold on. Yeah, me too. Refreshing. Oh, sorry. Not sorry. Hmm. <laughs> They're back. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. All right. Uh, hold on here. Sorry, I'm looking at... Oh, uh, okay. Uh, so is wilderness uh, refueling a difficult check? It is. Oh shit! Okay. 
but you can do things like take your time. Yeah, you you could take your time, which would give you a plus two, which is what you would need. Okay. Yeah. I'm not in a hurry. Would you like a decaf coffee? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that would help. I did not realize it was a difficult check. I might have just found an eye for it if I could. Oh, you know. And all that happens if you fuck that check up is you stall the engines and then you have to make other power checks and everything. People scramble around. But in the end, it's just a neat little ride. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Sounds awful. Why do I roll so shitty on pilot? As long as you don't crash into the jet. <laughs> I yeah. guess that's three. It shouldn't be this bad. But, yeah. I'm sure the effect of how bad you miss it has a direct result of how crazy things get. But. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we have to do all the stupid shit, like actually follow space etiquette now. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, if, if someone does a fucking distress signal, we're actually supposed to answer that shit. No way. <sighs> yeah. No way, Jose. Uh, oh, I'm not saying. Anything. Right, I'm not <laughs> saying we have to. I'm just saying that you know, proper etiquette in space is you answer a distress call. Board. It's the same as at sea. We can pretend we're not here. You you can do that. We didn't receive any distress signal. Good practice, your lies. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just looking at. Well, I'm trying to find wilderness refueling in Traveler Companion uh, because they said that there are additional rules for it in here, and I want to see what happens. Jump drive, yes. Fuel consumption. Additional rules? They got new rules? Yeah, it's basically skimming rules. Yeah. I've read it before. I know what you're talking about. So, yeah, if you want to, we'll just... We'll skip that. If you want to take your time, that will give you the, the necessary 10. And uh, Yes, I do not want to mess this up. That's embarrassing. Who rolled a one? I did. Uh, so it takes you about one hour to skim the fuel, and it is a fairly rough ride. And then, of course, it's going to take uh, you know an, an amount of time. Uh, after you've skimmed the fuel, you are then you're, you skim the hydrogen. You are then going to have to sit in orbit while your fuel processors uh, chew on it and turn it into actual you're, usable gas. I found it. 164 Traveler Companion update. Blah blah blah. Gas giant operations. That's the one that I was looking for. Yes, thank you. Fuel skimming. Uh, ship can skim fuel equal to 1% of its fuel hull tonnage per pass with a pass typically requiring 2D minutes. Uh, thus, a vessel wanting to obtain 20% of its hull tonnage and fuel in a deep layer will need 20 passes. So, you will 20 need... 20 passes? No, sorry. That doesn't count. So... About 10 minutes per pass. Uh, yeah. So you're going to be here for probably a couple days. Um, not to mention that, of course, your fuel processors are going to have to uh, chew on all of this and turn it into actual usable gas. And so uh, that's where that takes a couple of days. Uh, in that meantime, uh, first, uh, who wants to make a... Um, Astrogation check for Thebus. I'll go for that. 
Venus is better than Noctum, right? Norcum. I think so. I don't remember what's on Noctum. Themis, wasn't that the place you're, we you're weren't supposed to go? Oh, <laughs> well, we're in a different ship. We're in a different ship. Well, you guys spent some time at Themis. We weren't, uh, they weren't happy with us. Uh, remember, Themis is the, is the one where you have to, if you're going to go planet side, you have to first dock at the high port. Or, or else uh, they will ban you from the high port if you go directly to the planet. Oh, and we've gone to the planet. We have, yeah. Right, but you've all, yeah. you also went to the high port first, so yeah. yeah. Uh, they're not mad at us. Yeah, no, they're they're not displeased. Uh, uh, so what? Is this who... the place where we? Uh... I got eleven. Okay, so yeah, this Thebus was what, where you rescued what, the. Uh, was this the, the place where the, where the uh, security people tried to arrest us? No, this was Thebus was where you rescued the Aslan noble's son. And okay. then, uh, and there were uh, you went on the the you disguised yourselves as uh, hunters on the planet, and uh, that didn't right. That okay, didn't now out. I remember. Uh, so <clears throat> I'm just getting old. <laughs> I get confused too. So. Man, we go to a lot of places and do a lot of shit, and it's really <laughs> always a crapshoot on whether they're happy or mad when we leave. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right. <laughs> We can go to Thieves. So, so Ting, in your communications, uh, you pick up a um, a report uh, that has gone that has come through that came through the local data net uh, at at uh, um, Drinax, bound for. Uh, and it's not even on the map. It's uh, down beyond the, the rimward uh, from the map. Bound for a world called Verito, and uh, the it is a report. Uh, specifically, it is uh, the Jaskarl report. And it says in 841, Jadeko uh, uh, established a district a district headquarters at Verito. In the Tlaiowaha subsect, or in the Tlaiowaha sector, um, is this good or bad? So, General Development Company has had no, no direct uh, involvement in trade with the Aslan Harry. They had uh, development con. Shit. Uh -huh. My screen blipped out. Uh -huh. My power flickered again. That sucks, anus. Yes. So it says that uh, that uh, they've had no direct uh, uh, contracts with uh, the Aslan Harate, uh, but they have had development contracts with more than 70% of the worlds on the trade route. And, and they're really known for their honesty. I mean, this is a company <laughs> that is known for its, I mean, it's, it's solid. It, it's, it's the backbone of of, of humanity. humanity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like like it's it's wholesome like Walmart. So it says basically in eight forty three the manager of the district headquarters hired a scientist to compile a report uh, on the trade patterns uh, that are likely to develop to develop in the coming decades. And this scientist was named Jamal Jaskarl. And uh, the summary of the report reads, you are screwed. The a oh, Shit. Wow. Power, power just keeps flickering. I can't. There we go. I'm back again. Um, it says, uh, you are screwed. The Aslan are inevitably going to eat the reach for lunch, and there is a high probability that they will go far enough to take Corridor Sector and cut the domain of Demeb Deneb in off entirely as their attacks will likely coincide with some other imperial crisis like a civil war. All your work building up the economy of the Reach just makes the world more attractive for conquest. Well, his name should be naming Nancy. He <laughs> might be right, though. Yeah, maybe. Give that guy an A. <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean that is a report, and and we need to pay attention to that. Uh, 
especially because I mean, if if shit does start getting funky with Aslan jumping across with big ships, I mean, we're we're two parsecs away from the area they're claiming right now. Right. Yeah, but the floating house is like the only thing worth a shit on our planet, and it's uh, pretty small, so it's a lot easier to get that. Oh, I, I'll agree there. I, I think we should build a... a is there a high port in, in Drenix? Uh, no, just the floating, well, the, the floating palace, I guess. Right. I mean, I'm talking about one like uh, one with shipyard capabilities. I don't think so. Mm, not really. I mean, Drenix uh, does have shipbuilding capabilities. What they don't have is the raw materials to do so. Or the the money, really. <laughs> money and manpower. Right. I mean, money, manpower, and resources. But they have the shipyards available. They just don't have... So we don't really have, like, territory for any of them to take. And we don't have a lot of money. So they might just skip us over. It might not be worth the trouble if we're, like, honoring. Them. Yeah. Right. I, I mean... From what it gathers to me, with a lot of the the different systems and shit we've tried to get onto, if we could, if we could find a way to produce system defense boats and use the Osiris to drop them off, because um, we can we can jump with them. If if we if we were to if we were to get into the the defense boat market, I mean that would solve needs so many planets that are supposed to be our allies. I, I would think they'd be willing to pay that. That's a really good idea. Yeah, it is a good idea. I don't know how to get into that industry myself, but I'm sure we I can mean, figure it out. I mean, I think it just we just need some... to find some useless uh, ships that we can gut and uh, just glue them together. <laughs> fill them with guns. Gunboats yeah. and armor. I mean, that's yeah. that's that's what they are. But, uh, I mean, that, that adds stability to the whole fucking region and has a, a extremely high end income i mean those defense boats aren't fucking cheap i, I wouldn't think and especially if you're you know you could spit them out regularly that they're a lot cheaper i mean with the exception it depends on how much how many guns and armor you put on them but um they're cheaper than a jump capable ship because most most uh system defense boats are not j drived right and and that's the that's the problem that uh, we've we've run into with with what was it Torpol Blue uh, uh, I think there was a couple more just right in going down there towards Arsard or whatever that that's really just what they want they want system defense boats and uh, and and shit like that I mean that's that's been the common cry all through the the reach right. So, who wants to make the power plus intellect or education check? Oh, that's not me. Not me. Not it. <laughs> Nine. Okay. And, uh, Keith, you can make J Drive plus uh, intellect or education with a plus seven. Oh. <laughs> uh, 17. Okay. Whoa, 17? So you'll actually be arriving in Thebes uh, 11 hours earlier than than normal because of this, you know, extremely smooth entry into jump. Yeah. Uh, and coming out of jump, your passive sensors detect a ship. Oh no, run away, run away. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Emma. Throw the holy hand grenade of Antioch. I expect some trouble of an Augment Raider or something as we're going along in this fat far trader, but yeah. they're not really known for their badassery. No, they're kind of dumb and hungry. Uh, and they generally don't try to destroy the ship. And uh, we will definitely try to destroy them. I've, I've got that feeling. 
That's how we roll. And we have missiles. So come in close if you want, you fucks. You're ready for it, huh? Yeah, well, we got the sandcasters too on this ship. So that's true. Are they really do any good? The sandcasters? They stop yeah. lasers. They I stop lasers, so. and if you're on a planet, you can devastate a large area with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we found that out. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And, and and when ships get adjacent, if they're trying to board in action, you can use the sandcasters to repel borders. I so, did not know that. That is true. Cool. Yeah, they, they basically them. work like a shotgun. Uh, so it is it is a subsidized merchant uh, pinging as the Ikadagur, and uh, you've you've actually seen this ship before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. you, you you've passed the Ica de Gura before, um, and you didn't pirate it, uh, but it was in system. Does it recognize us? I guess is the question. Well, it, wouldn't re it wouldn't recognize it. Wouldn't recognize shenanigans. Okay. We can still hail it. But you know, pinging yeah. at long range. Uh, Ica de Gura, mm -hmm. This is the shenanigans. We're friendly cruisers just touring the the dust belt uh how's it going out there any any immediate pirate threats that you know of and then i'll go ahead and run that active fucking scan okay uh this is a uh, captain sir wilhelm amenizir and uh no we haven't uh we haven't run into any pirates although uh, we are keeping our eyes open have you uh encountered any pirates in your travels Oh, well, in my travels, I have. I mean, there was a shit ton of them uh, over on, on Ogma the other day. And it, again, he kind of laughs. As, well, that's to be expected. The Ogmans are barbarians. Yeah. But no, I mean, we've we've traveled several parsecs and not really seen any problems. We we really hope to keep that up. You know, we're just we're just touring. Must be nice. I got a 15 on my active scan, by the okay. way. Okay, so oh. um, you, with your active scan, need another boat. Oh. I, got ships. I think our main thing on this ship is that we have missiles and... Uh, and what triple beams? On on shenanigans, you've got a turret with two beam lasers, and you got a turret with missile a missile rack, and a sandcaster. Yeah. So we can shoot one missile a pop, and then the beam lasers do what long range? Uh, they don't have as long of a range as pulse lasers. They beam lasers are good to uh, medium with range. Medium. Yeah. And right now, Ica de Gur is at long, uh, but uh, mm. you are picking up. She is uh, Ica de Gur is uh, since you have made uh, comms contact, has tight beamed and is actively scanning your ship, like real closely like you are picking up your your sensors are picking up em transmissions that they are looking right at you checking us out. Right. well i mean this is supposedly a systems fence craft right is that what they're no, portraying it's a, it's, themselves it, it's a subsidized merchant and uh, right. for all well, intents and purposes it looks like every other fat trader you've ever seen 400 tons thrust four jump one uh, i'm gonna have to go ahead and throw a lock on them <laughs> uh, the the comms come alive and uh, 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 Sir Wilhelm uh, comes over and says, uh, "Shenanigans! Why are you uh, why are you doing a sensor lock on us?" Over. It's not polite to look underneath the lady's dress without asking. <laughs> um. He says, uh, he says, uh, noted, noted, uh, 
And uh, it, you, the, note that the, the sensors come off. He says, I, I was just making sure that you're not uh, you're not meaning to pirate any any vessels or try to take any of our cargo. Oh, no, we don't want any of your cargo unless you willingly trade it to us. You know, I mean, we're we're trying to do peaceful things, but but don't get me wrong. If you try to fucking pirate us, I will duct tape you to a chair and then I'll place a mirror across from you. I will cut your face off. And then while you watch that, I will I will cut your nuts off and stick them in your throat. And you can watch yourself as you die and choke on your own nutsack. He says, well, it sounds like you feel the same way about pirates that uh, my crew and I do. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're on the same yeah. page. Uh, on the same right. page there. Yeah. Why don't we and just take I'll, your ship? I'll drop the lock. Yeah, I'll drop I'm the lock. I'm going to go EVA and take a ship okay. all the way across. <laughs> so you, you drop the lock, and uh, and uh, he says, you know, um, ha- safe travels, you know. Yeah, yeah bye. Are you uh, here again? Are you wilderness refueling, or are you docking at Thebes Highport? I think since Thebes isn't upset, we can get fuel there. I think I prefer that after how hard it was last time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay. We can also get a chance to carouse and snoop for any uh, goods on what might be going on in number one before we just show up over there. That's yeah, true. seriously. So, Thebes Highport is a Class B starport. They have refined fuel. Uh, they are charging. Uh, it will be 900 credits for birthing cost. Uh, okay. And 1,000 credits per ton uh, of fuel. And you need... F- Wait, is that right? That was awfully expensive. That could be a hundred if you rolled real low. I I wouldn't complain if you said fifty. I wouldn't complain oh, if you sorry. said uh, five, it's, it's free. We, it's free here in this sound. <laughs> five. It's five hundred credits per per ton of fuel. You need forty tons. So that's twenty k. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Not a big deal. Going to carouse in the bar then and shit, right? Sure, or do we need to check in and or anything like that? Uh, no. You've you've uh, been cleared to dock it. It'll take about six hours to refuel. I want to carouse too. Sometimes. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah, let's all go. Let's all go. All right, whoever wants to do some carousing. Uh, you can belly up to the to the starport bar. They've got a uh, there's a number of starport bars, but they've got they're right next to the uh, uh, is uh, right next to the the port uh, where you're at. There is a dive bar called the uh, the fuel pump. <laughs> nice. And it is your typical, you know, dive bar. Now, right now, Thebes Highport isn't particularly busy. If you remember, they have uh, what they kind of like a Mardi Gras season. Anytime a a uh, a caravan of freighters comes through, they, you know, all the prices go on discount, and they throw out yeah. all the party streamers, and they the whole port turns into a party. This isn't that case right now. Hold on. I got an eight. All right. I got eleven. That's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Twelve. Heck yeah, we're sociable today. Yeah. I I should try to sing or something here. You should perform, yeah. Yeah, I'm Look gonna try up. to fucking yeah, I'm gonna try to fucking do a, a concert. Uh, uh, for him. <laughs> I'd like to sing some songs with my fabulous package. Thing. Fuck yeah, man. So, Ting, uh, you're you're kind of you know, 
singing and 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 carousing and you you, you get a small group of uh spacers around you that are that are willing to buy you drinks and whatnot but beth yeah. uh as this is going on you're you're uh <laughs> kind of chatting with some of them and you pick up a local rumor that there's a Soleimani colony flotilla still traveling at sublight speeds through the Trojan Reach, and they're said that this this uh, colony ship. So it was launched uh, pre jump drive, or or pre jump two, and it said that this thing has millions of colonists that are in deep freeze, uh, that that has just been traveling all this time, and nobody knows you know exactly where it's at. A bunch of meat popsicles floating around in space. Well, huh? as soon as they reach a destination, the computers on the ship are supposed to thaw everybody and they're supposed to set up a colony. But, um, and, and the rumor, of course, is that you know, if if somebody were to find this this colony ship, it would be loaded with oh, yeah, with um, Good. yeah, lots of loot. That's a cool. We moment. might want to dive into that. I mean, yeah. that would be kind of a cool something. I mean, that'd that's probably a long pay time off. Been floating, man. That's crazy. Well, I mean, it could be almost anywhere. <laughs> well, I mean, you have to fucking uh, try to get information on where it originated from, when, what direction, and and then do a lot of fucking hardcore math, right? And then come up with an educated guess, and then go there. Who else? Scan the fuck out of who else is going to carouse? Um, keep carouse. It's carousing and, and it got a twelve. Yeah. Okay. On a twelve. Gregor is not. Okay. Twenty-two. He's Maybe just, drinking, can... he's just yeah. drinking ale on the ship. Okay. So, uh, Keith, you pick up uh, a rumor that solar flares on Pandora have been blocking travel through the system. And that this happens about once every seven years. Interesting. Solar flare. Yeah, and yeah. I, I guess that the Pandora, it's known for these extreme solar flares that happen about every seven years. Um, I wonder if we can make that story. I'm trying to remember where Pandora is. It may not even be on this map. Anyways, uh, so those those are the rumors you pick up. Um, and Keith, or not Keith, uh, Tang, you, uh, <laughs> you pick up 200 credits, uh, people tipping you. Right on, and then I want to try to inspire people to tell me the most outrageous secret they've ever heard of these, these people that are tipping me and stuff. You know, I'm hoping I'm kind of getting them drinking you know, go ahead and make, a, get them real go, make a make and a uh, go ahead and make a persuasion plus charm check. Your social won't account because you're not going. You're not taking. You assume, I'm assuming you're not using your real identity. My real identity. Uh, no, my jug jug identity gives me a plus one, uh, but my fabulous package would still be into effect. So I mean, that's I, persuasion and my fabulous is plus three. Okay. So if I add one for charm or jug jugs social, that gives me a plus four total. So I mean, you know, uh, I am the shit. Okay. Yes, you will remember the fucking night that you gave me your innermost secret, you pathetic people. Get drunk and tell me your secret. <laughs> yeah. Woo. So the most outrageous. Uh, secret that, that that you learn is that back on Paul, uh, if you remember Paul, that's where yeah. he ran into the feral Aslan. This guy tells you that there's a lost ruby mine on Paul that uh, all, that the, the rubies and ore are still laying around in the mine, but that the mine was overrun by monsters from off-world. Another guy speaks up because it wasn't monsters; they were mutants that were created from the from the atomic strikes. And he goes, "No, don't listen to him." It, a ship brought in a bunch of uh, monster-like creatures from off-world, and this they they took over this ruby mine. And the other guy's, "No, that's not what happened. It, it's from mutants." And they kind of yeah. get into an argument about it. Yeah, Ruby Mine sounds amazing on Paul. If we ever cruise him by there, I'm going to ask that we stop. <laughs> that's, 
That was good. Yeah. We've now, been to Paul before. Yeah. yeah. Find any like, you know, who cares about monsters when you wear a battle dress? That's a, yeah, right. That's <laughs> yeah. true. That is true. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, that was. Yeah, that was that was profitable uh, in its own weird way. Who wants uh, to make the astrogation check? The, the final one. You'll be at number one. I'll do that. Yeah. I'm trying to build Jug Jug's social score by performing and fucking doing my own uh, form of weird music and stuff. I, kind of like a tenacious D act, you know. I'm I'm comical <laughs> and and I mix. Mix guitar with catchy rhymes. We got nine. All right. Uh, who wants to make the power check? That would be Gregor. No, no, no. <laughs> we didn't do anything. <laughs> We're stuck. Oh, crap. So Gregor's transferring power. Who wants to make the? Uh, so Keith, you can go ahead. I could say it's taking forever to do it. Yeah, I mean, if you take, I mean, you could take your time. That bring it up to six. So, um, yeah, if, if you take your time, it's already six. Yeah, you're not in a hurry. And so it, it is six. Oh, it is six. Okay. Uh, oh, then never mind. Uh, and so uh, for some reason it was just showing four on my screen, but uh, so. Uh, Keith, you can make a uh, J drive plus intellect or education at plus three. Uh, that is uh, 17. Okay. <laughs> so in a week, you reach. Oops. You reach number one. If we feed shenanigans during this week, if we feed shenanigans the, the idea of this colony ship, you know, is there any references to that or anything on, on anything on where it might have originated from? Uh, well, Soleimani, so probably from Terra. Oh, yeah, Soleimani. It probably originated from Terra. At least that's what all the stories... Uh, Terra? Yeah. VR. Yeah. You mean VR. Earth? The, the you know the the word that literally means dirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, that's you know I live on dirt. I live yeah, on sand. To be honest, all we have here is sand. It's hard as concrete, literally. When it mm -hmm. rains, that when it rains, it doesn't soak into the sand. It just runs off like a road. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> it's true. That's why we That's get the ice is right now. So I, I, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So you so come out of here. There, there is no considerable traffic uh, in uh, in the system for number one. This, of course, up at the top is uh, number one's uh, stellar layout. Uh, I remember. Yeah, number one is a moon of a large gas giant that is uh, 0.15 AU from an M35 star. And so this is the map of said world. Uh, and as you can see, it is mostly water. <laughs> but the, the low-lying elevations are toxic. They're, the atmosphere is corrosive. It is poisonous. Uh, so all of the colonies uh, are under the ocean, are under deep under the waves. Uh, and really, there's there's one big colony, and it was the old penal colony, which is now they kind of have a um, more or less a a pride about them that uh, while all of the other colonies of the Sindalian Empire kind of faltered and failed. Number one, who had nothing because they were a penal colony and they are, you know, miles underwater, um, they thrived. They 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 actually were able to pull themselves up and and survive all of this. And so, 
uh, you have uh, you have two choices. You can, of course, go. Uh, you can stop by your fuel station first and refuel, which, of course, for you would be free since you own it. Hey. Let's do that. Yeah, and uh, and we'll also try to get uh, this place back up and running. So, I mean, it's not that it's been shut down, but the guy that w that you had left, who was in charge, basically your manager, uh, when you. When you dock with the fuel station uh, at the front counter uh, in the reception area, there is like a little hologram and a couple of candles, like not real candles. They're little LED candle lights like you'd get at the dollar store sitting around this hologram. And it's a picture of this guy and it just sits there and rotates. And, and the the woman behind the counter, she she looks up. She, she doesn't even recognize you guys. Well, it's she's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see. And she she's calculating on her on her hand com computer. She says, "Oh, uh, so uh, five hundred credits, uh, uh, twenty thousand credits for for forty tons of fuel." And she says, uh, "You you can pay that in cash, right?" Actually, <laughs> uh, look at it, Keith. <laughs> Yeah, um, we, we. I think it's time for me to check in on my uh, income on this station. She says, "Oh, oh, I, I didn't realize that that you were the owner. Oh, oh, oh I'm so sorry." She says, "Of course, you can take whatever you want." Um, and on the the income for the station, uh, another eight thousand credits have come through. Nice. Oh, I'm sorry, not 8,000. 80,000 credits. 80,000. That sounds more like a long Yeah. Of course, I mean, that, that's the profits. Uh, there is some overhead. Right. And she, oh, of she says, so So, are you here because of, of Clive? And she points to the hologram. She says, poor Clive. We didn't know that that airlock was so bad. <laughs> Oh, that's terrible. She says it's yeah. really weird because we just ran maintenance on it too. Wow, that's I, that's awful. I I would like to um, uh, inspect this airlock, and also um, I I think I'd like to give everybody a slight bonus to uh, 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 help them through this troubling time. Uh, a, a thousand credits each. Oh, that is so kind of you. Oh my God, we have the best boss. Um, so she she calls one of the uh, one of the maintenance workers and uh, uh, Joe. Joe comes over and 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 takes you back to the airlock and he says, "Yeah." He goes, "I I went over this." He goes, "In fact, I even went over it again after the accident happened." And I still can't find anything that's wrong. But the weird thing about it, he says, I'm going to tell you, uh, Mr. Keith, is that um, the really weird thing about it is that all of our security feeds went down for for five minutes when that accident happened as well. That's so strange. I wonder why that would happen. He says, I don't know. It's very odd. Interesting. We've got these human slaves. Maybe we can leave them as security. Yeah, um, that, that is a good idea. If they it actually yeah. hit this buzzer. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, just be like, you know, here, these guys are security. You know, you need to make sure they eat and and have, you know, a nice, you know, they can, they're really happy to share a room probably and then provide them with a library to read or whatever. And if, if shit goes funky, you know, they will, they you will gotta, run out. And give them a computer program to help them learn how to read. Well, I mean, yeah, you know, they, they, they've got time and, and figure it the fuck out. But really, all these guys need to do is eat shit and, and hit stuff with a stick that acts up. You know, they, they know how to shoot fucking uh, they, they all have gun rifles. Yeah, they all have gun combat one. So, yeah. So here here's a security force of fucking feral humans. Yeah. Feral <laughs> human slaves that. that, that <laughs> You know, uh, over if you want, again. you can put a nice yeah, problem yeah. around your throat. Once you guys get over the fucking uh, the language barriers, y'all will be great friends. So you you set these these dog these ex dog soldiers up uh, on your on your station. I assume you're paying them as employees. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you yeah they get food and food and lodging. So that <laughs> so, so that brings and, the total, and all the ammunition they need. That brings the total <laughs> complement of your of your uh, fuel station up to uh, ten, and uh, okay. um, so you, you it takes about four hours to fuel up your ship, and uh, and then you you spend the next uh, thirty hours making it to the main world. Uh, Beth, you can make a piloting plus dex check. Okay, great. Um, 13. I did great. Excellent. Yeah, and you only needed a 6 for this one. They won't suspect we'll get into disguise before we... I just yeah. did because they want to the green stuff. Really <laughs> Toxic <laughs> mist. Toxic vapors. Yeah, mm. don't breathe. We need to be fucking totally. No, half a lot of it. It gets you fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so, up here. Is it marijuana gas? <laughs> it is. It's marijuana gas. So, up here is where the uh, port is. And, I mean, this is a classy starport. Um, your fuel station is slightly better than that. I mean, <laughs> you know, maybe a little, not not by a lot, but uh, yeah, they, they have unrefined fuel down here. This is at the top of a mountain um, that uh, it, it, the, the nauseous, uh, you know, volatile atmosphere isn't as bad up here as it is at lower levels. Down here, is the rail line that goes down off the mountain and then plunges into the ocean down to the col the penal col or old penal colony, which is now really just a colony. And uh, down here, right here, is where the the shop coordinates lead you to. So. We could just take the air raft right there, can't we? Yes, you can. Yeah, we don't even have to dive. That's really great. Yeah, uh, and um, so I mean, all all we need to do is like put on some kind of vac suit or something, and right. Yeah. Do we have, yeah. do we have cloth armor? Or um, I I, mean, I don't know what the law uh, level. Are we allowed to walk around in our battle dress? Uh, no. I will tell probably you, not. probably not is probably the correct answer. That is a good question. Let's see here. Uh, I swear they were like case breathers. If I can, I would. <laughs> yeah, if I remember, they they have a high law level. But let's double check. Yeah, they have a little respirator. Yeah. Yeah, number one has law level eight. Ooh. Yeah, it's... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you can't even carry a weapon at all. Do they have a knife band? Is yeah, law, law level A means... Where are my law levels? Here it is. Okay, eight. Uh, weapons that are banned. All bladed weapons and basically... Yeah, uh, all bladed weapons and even uh, stunners are allowed. All right. Or no, all bladed weapons and stunners. So, um, you're not even allowed to carry shotguns, no firearms, no concealed weapons, no light assault weapons, no military weapons, no portable energy or laser weapons. Um, obviously, no WMDs. And How do all, people cut up their fruit? All visible. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> they they all have sporks. Um, <laughs> and all visible armor is banned. All right, let's put on our little breathing mask things. We've been there before. We have to have them kicking around somewhere. Yeah. Right? Or do we have to buy some? Uh, you've been here before, yeah. So yeah. it will cost you... It's a million credits to land. <laughs> <laughs> Close. Is... I could afford that. <laughs> well, I mean, we we could leave shenanigans just in orbit and not even have to pay to land and just take off with the air raft, right? If yeah, if you dip in the atmosphere, you can take off in the air raft. 
Yeah, you can do that. And then the ship can fly itself back to orbit. Yeah, you want you want yeah, the ship can fly itself back into orbit. Yeah, you can be cheap and do it that way. Let's do it. Save some money. All right. Yeah. And this way we don't have to check our weapons or go through security typical stuff. And so that way if you want to throw uh, an ACR or two in the air raft, you know, who's really going to know? Well, I mean, I'll... birthing costs are only 600 credits. So, you, know, <laughs> you know, but, you know, this works too. So you get down to uh, down to this uh, shop down here. What was I doing? Okay. Yeah. You were going to pay us money. Lots of it. I just rolled initiative. You don't need to roll initiative. <laughs> <laughs> You're just anticipating, right? That's right. <laughs> no, these things always start out with, with some role play, and then we mess that up. And yeah, then, then we move to the initiative violence. Yeah, after you screw it up, then we have to go to initiative. Yeah. yeah but first, we'll, we'll have to fuck up the social aspect. So you get down and you find that the, there is, indeed these coordinates lead to a ship chandler um, that sells life support uh, spares and uh, prepackaged meals and things of that nature. And it is owned. Uh, there is This guy comes out of uh, from behind so he's got like a little front area uh and he's got there uh, on this counter uh the the lobby area there is a crate full of uh prepackaged meals and he is wearing <laughs> he's wearing overalls but over the overalls he has a suit jacket on and <clears throat> he steps out from behind the counter and he shakes your he shakes all of your hands and he introduces himself as uh, my name is Genville Igishku and uh, I'm, I'm the proprietor of this here place and he, he kind of grabs his jacket and he goes yep yes sir in my line of business you have to be both a mechanic a plumber and a businessman and he he and he kind of wipes his hands on the jacket leaving like greasy streaks on it <laughs> and uh, he goes uh, yeah you got people coming in here constantly you know typical stuff they they need to know how to get algae out of their internal pipelines. And sometimes, you know, they'll do a bulk order for rations. And then he turns and he looks at you and he says, The liner Hustwick, gold, platinum, and bulk currency, armed but not so you'd notice. Move on the quiet off the main lanes. His noisy will see that I get my fee. And he hands you a, a data uh, wafer and he says, Here's the data. Now, I have a new line of luxury pre-packaged rations at a discount on this god off or you can get a discount on this god-awful cardboard stuff. Do you see anything in here you like? Well, uh, you know, really I was uh, wondering if you knew what doctors and plumbers had in common. <laughs> no, sir, I do not. Oh, they both bury their mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> he he kind of laughs. He goes, ah, "That's pretty good. Well, I'm going to save that one for the local tavern." Man, I got something here for you. Would you like it? I got a T-shirt that says "Go Cowboys." <laughs> <laughs> we could buy some rations. So up on the discount. <laughs> I'll sell it pretty cheap. It's only been it's only been around for a thousand years. You know, I mean, he's giving us the information and data and shit. I mean, in theory, we could go, man, no, I I don't want none of this shit. I, I thought you guys sold fucking, you know, porn. <laughs> he's, he's You're a, not oh, smart. No, 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 is, no, we don't have no porn. That's banned. Oh, really? He I'll wouldn't have, allow I'll any have, of that. I have a thousand dollars of them premium prepackaged meals. Okay, okay, we can set you up with that. And he, he pulls out he pulls out like twenty of them and sets them into a, a box. And they are they are these are like they are 
essentially what <coughs> would be classified as uh, MREs if you were a noble. Yeah. So these are well, these you are. You know, really I get a social of twelve. I need to keep up. Yeah, he he <laughs> pulls out twenty of them and puts them in a crate and hands them over. <laughs> So, All yeah, right. that's a thousand credits worth. Um, so, looking over this data, you see that there is, I mean, you, you slot it into either a wafer jack or into your portable computer. And you see <clears throat> that this is a full listing of uh, various uh, travel routes. And it is, it is specifically tracking a subsidized liner called the Hustwick. And it is listed as, indeed, carrying bulk currency, gold, and platinum uh, uh, ingots. And that it is, uh, it seems to be trying to stay off of the main routes. It's avoiding um, any of the uh, stations or high ports. And instead is, is opting for wilderness refueling. And it seems that it is uh, going to be staying in this system, in the out system, like way out past your gas giants, and uh, is going to be, um, it, it's supposed to wait for, uh, meet a, make a rendezvous there. It doesn't list who it's supposed to meet, but it should be there within the next two weeks. Excellent. Well, yeah, we so can, can, yeah. Um... We're in shenanigans, so this is going to be interesting. Well, you know, no guts, no glory. I mean, how does shenanigans feel about us pirating? Shenanigans is perfectly fine with it. I mean, she, she, she has gotten to know who you are and what you're doing, and she's kind no. of on board with that. So her previous owner, um, she has let you know that Coraline Petrovsky wasn't exactly 100% on the up and up at times either. She, uh, Coraline Petrovsky, has a, um, a background in the intelligence service for Regina. All right. Well, then, I mean, if we're going to go do this shit, we need to do it like a pirate and turn off our fucking uh, transponder and try to sneak the fuck out there and see if we can find these fuckers. So, with uh, passive sensors. So are you turning the transponder off, or are you going into... What are all the different modes? There's passive, there's off, there's... Um, I'm going to start out with ping mode, where only people that ping us will get to read it. I gotcha. Right, and then as we break away a little bit and get away, then it just... Totally off. So there's basically Figured active, out. passive, and covert. So passive means that, that they would have to ping you in order to get yeah. a response. Yeah, I'm going to be passive right now, and then I'll go covert when we start getting out, you know, kind of out by ourselves a little bit. Okay. That's, that's my suggestion. That sounds good to me. Yeah. yeah. Should we go for a swim? <laughs> We've been for a swim here. Yeah, you've been for a swim here. It sucked. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Anyways, uh, so we will pick this up next week uh, at seven o'clock on Wednesday night with you guys uh, dealing with the. With the Hustwick. Oh. Copy the. That. All right. So, yeah, we will pick this up next week at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night uh, with you basically laying an ambush for the Hustwick. You've got two weeks. Um, Basically, to set up your your ambush site, um, actually, and I should show you I'll show you where it is coming out at. So up, whoops. So you're talking. So this is the second gas giant at point four six AU. They are way out here. They are going to rendezvous at this ice world at two point five six AU out. 
Oh. So quite a ways from the main world. Uh, oh, we're going to have to jump out there? You could jump out there, and you would still end up having a week a week to wait. <laughs> They've got, you know, there's we wouldn't be able to refuel from there, though, so I, I think we should... Oh, that's yeah, a good point. Yeah, slow. Yeah, let's take it slow. It'll be all right. Okay, so you guys will be... Yeah, you, you've got plenty of time. I mean, the only thing you would have to worry about at that point is... Uh, I mean, I doubt you're going to run out of food. He just bought it. <laughs> yeah, a, we'll eat our new a, MRE. Noble, so noble uh, luxury rations, so. Heck yeah. <laughs> All just right. sharing. Filet <laughs> mignon. A nice Beaujolais. <laughs> <laughs> so. Palm frogs. <laughs> so, uh, quick question: Did you guys like doing it this Coco way? Vaughn. Did you guys like doing it this way, where I randomly rolled to see what was in each system? Or do you? Yeah, like I, I didn't mind it at all. It's yeah, fine. Yeah. I, I'm totally fine with you know random stuff that could you know have nothing to do or everything to do with the adventure. I I like the you know. When we're in yeah, certain we ships, can. we can make a lot of money off just light pirating, you know. Right. Maybe a little extortion, uh, you know, you know, kidnapping, if you will, a little bit. You know, just just to add fluff to the to the area. There's a <laughs> there's a reputation in the Trojan Reach, and it is up to us to maintain it. Right. That's true. <laughs> All right. Well, we will pick this up uh, Wednesday night at seven o'clock. Thank you. All right. You're Thanks. welcome. That Have was a lot of guys. fun, Chris. Glad your power came back. Me too. <laughs> Hopefully it stays uh, that way. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. I'll see you. All right. Have a good night.